good good evening leaders and uh, how are you trust you are all doing well welcome to strategic leader executive leadership masterclass cohort one we're so excited to host you as uh, our first cohort uh, for this uh, masterclass and i want to take the opportunity to appreciate you for considering this uh, journey, which I'm sure will be a very exciting, very inspiring, as well as very uh, transformative journey. I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge uh, your presence and uh, wish to take this time just to uh, start off the discussion uh, tonight. Uh, this will just be an overview uh, of the program. Uh, we'll also just want to have an interaction with you I'll be able to share what is on the table uh, and then we uh, we set the pace and set the stage ready to be able to commence this discussion. Strategic uh, leadership is one of the critical uh, areas of focus now and uh, any transformative organization, any organization that wants to scale up, they have to de deliberately be able to consider the issues of strategic leadership as we see in the course of our discussion what has been the impact uh how organizations have been impacted uh when there is a gap in terms of how we grow and nurture our strategic leaders i want to request that um we we start just by saying a prayer i'm sure it's always important just to appreciate every time we are we, we come together uh, just to take uh, cognizance that uh it's a platform, it's an opportunity God has given us, and therefore it's just good and fair enough just to say thank you to God. So let's uh, uh, say a, a prayer, then we straight away uh, get into our discussion. God, we are grateful tonight. As leaders, we are here ready to learn. We are here ready to be molded. We are here ready, God, to be able to scale up our leadership reflect more on the kind of leadership we are offering and even anticipate to be able to enhance our capacity and more importantly, uh, maximize our impact. It's our prayer that as we walk through this journey together, we'll guide at every step that we make. We pray for insight. We pray uh, for a deeper revelation of whatever we are discussing. May it have a big impact and may it all Lord translate to tangible uh, tangible outcome and also tangible uh, impact within our leadership environment. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank, Thank you so much, leaders, and uh, allow me just to uh, straight away just uh, invite you again and welcome you to Strategic uh, Leader uh, Executive Leadership Masterclass. Uh, the target for this masterclass is emerging CEOs and also seasoned CEOs. Uh, which means basically anybody can fit in this con uh, the conversation, uh, whether you are running an entity that is newly formed or you are running an entity that has been there for a while. You know, the greatest ignorance of our time is the willingness to get to a space where you feel I need to unlearn and relearn, uh, where you have to be very adaptive to what is happening within our environment. That's the kind of conversation that we're going to have uh, as we walk together uh, for the period uh, that is before us. Remember, the Strategic Leadership Executive Masterclass is a blueprint for strategic leaders. Every strategic leader, this will be a blueprint just to help us think strategically, be able to plan and act tactically. That will be our slogan in the course of our discussion, that as a leader, I need to think strategically. I also need to plan and act tactically. In terms of competency and also in terms of strategy. So this is purely aligned to uh, the discussions uh, before us uh, in terms of how we're able to lead um, uh, as leaders in terms of uh, impact, what can translate uh, to not just survival, but thriving in an environment that uh, uh, many organizations are actually sampling. How do we make a shift? Because uh, there are two things that can happen when there is a crisis. One, you can flourish, and two, it can also be a turning point. It, it, sometimes the uh, the organizations that are not able to evolve, they are not able to reemerge. 
Uh, they're not able to reinvent themselves. They're not able to retool themselves. And what happens is that uh, when they are, they are hit by change, uh, then that uh, ability, uh, what we will be calling agility, lack of agility, uh, impacts those organizations negatively. Leaders, this is what is happening. We look at some case studies tonight of organizations that were doing very well, but what really made them not see the light of the day, not go through the changes, is what we are discussing tonight. The issue of how strategic are you as a leader? How strategic are you as an organization? How aware are you about your environment? How aware are you about the capacity of the people that you are, you have, yeah, the staff? And are they able to pull you through uh, the environments, the changing environment? And then if there is a gap in terms of how the environment is behaving and the capacity that we have as leaders, then that means sometimes we have to uh, get to a space where we retool ourselves, where we ask ourselves hard questions as we shall be doing in the course of this uh, discussion. So it's about leading strategically and that uh, in, entails um, being able to think strategically. Yeah, think strategically. That will be a key conversation uh, and we'll be able to unpack this word um, uh, in the context of our discussion. Again, as I said, it's about planning, uh, but again, with action. And this has to be very tactful uh, for us to be able to emerge. Uh, the idea here is not just to survive. The idea here is we need to, we need to thrive, regardless of the environment. Because this is, it happens, We've seen cases of uh, organizations that have been able to excel even in the midst of crisis. And, and I think it's not far away from us. Um, the GLM is a very good example. When COVID hit uh, the world, uh, this generational leadership network uh, actually evolved. And that was our turning point. We were able to grow, we were able to reach more people. We were able to equip uh, people from a wider geographical uh, space uh, because uh, our response was a bit quick. And uh, I remember we, I asked one of the cohort uh, that was running at that time, what do we do as leaders? Do we stop meeting or do we think differently? Do we reinvent? Do we re-strategize and then relaunch? And basically, that's really the conversation that we're going to have um, in, in the course of this uh, this period. Uh, I want us just to be able to do a brief introduction. And since we are quite a number of us, we might take very long um, if we allow each person to speak. I want to invite you uh, kindly just to get to your chat. And uh, you feel free uh, probably to indicate your name, uh, the organization that you work, uh, work for, or the, the organization that you run or that you lead. And then probably you could also indicate uh, where you are joining us from. If you are an alumni of GLN, you could indicate there. Uh, if you are joining us and uh, you haven't gone through the, uh, the other programs, you're also welcome because uh, you will be able to fit uh, even in this discussion. So. Let me just invite you, uh, kindly lead us. Let's get to our chat message. I'll just sample a few of them, and then the rest we'll be able to look at as, as we continue uh, in this conversation. So uh, I invite you to your chat, uh, your name, just indicate your name, uh, your organization. Uh, probably you could also indicate um, where you're joining us from. Are you in Nairobi? Are you in Kenya? Are you in another country, uh, then from there, I'll be able to pick up from uh, from there and then we'll be able to move on. So let me just sample a few, sample a few, then we move on. Okay. So I'll sample a few along the way as we continue. And as I do that, uh, allow me just also to uh, project the expectation, even as I look at um, your, your chat uh, on the on the chat platform. So from your registration, we were able to uh, sample a number of your expectations. Uh, and in case there is any additional expectation, uh, again, I invite you just to feel free to be able to note it uh, on the chat. So what are some of the expectations from your end? These are the ones. Um, 
uh, maybe you could just look across to be the best version of a true leader. I really like that. Uh, to change level in my leadership, that's really important. To be a strategic leader, grow in my leadership skill, become a better me at the end of the program as iron sharpens iron. Very, very important. Great learning experience, networking. Allow me a minute. <laughs> Yeah, so let's continue sharing on the chat. Yeah, to be a leader of substance and of growth mindset towards others, uh, to be able to understand why people are different and how to transform them towards the right direction with respect and gentleness, really important. Uh, and I, I will look forward to see how we'll be able to address that in the course of our discussion. Uh, to be a strategic planner, uh, becoming more strategic to move with the needs of the current dynamic technological world. Yeah, world technological world, a lot of shifts within our environment. Again. Very, very important to gain more knowledge on leadership and strategize my leadership skills to become better in my leadership skill, and then finally, to become a transformative leader. These are some of the, your expectations, uh, and um, uh, we, we, we look forward, because I'm sure all this forms part of what we're going to discuss uh, in, our, in, our, in our class. So just to sample a few, I'll also invite you, maybe you could look at the chat. Uh, one of the, the, the most important aspect of GLN, and for those of us who are new to this platform, GLN is Generational Leadership uh, Network, the umbrella under which all these programs are anchored. Uh, one of the key priority for us is the issue of networking. Yeah, And that's why when we invite you just to introduce yourselves, uh, it's also part of just being able to connect uh, with each other. So I'll invite you just to look at the chat, see who is on board. Um, I know we, we have uh, Rev Murilla, who works with Papwell Industries, uh, located in Nairobi. We have Mariam Karanja, who works with I, uh, GIZ, is an alumni uh, located in Zambezi, Kikuyu. We have Janet Inima, works at Kenyatta National Hospital, uh, is also an alumni. We have Rewell uh, Matu, works at Kenya Diaspora Location. Those of us who are, want to be facilitated in terms of you want to travel out, uh, is, is in Nairobi. We, we have, um, uh, Murila has shared an expectation to be the best version of a true leader. Uh, Daniel, uh, good evening leaders. And Daniel says he works at Kenya Petroleum, as Outlets Association of Kenya. We have Grace Karaoke, who is a program coordinator at Equity Group Foundation uh, in Nyeri. Uh, and more, I'm sure more are coming, uh, more are coming, and we look at them as they continue to come. So let us, let's look at an overview. Today we're going to, to look at an overview. Not really, we, we not even get to the first module, uh, but this is just to create and, and uh, and uh, scale up our appetite, uh, even as we get into this conversation. And I want to start with this, uh, start with this slide here about grand master chess player. It is said that an amateur chess player will have a view of one to three moves, one to three moves that he or she can make or can take uh, when, when playing chess. That's an amateur. Uh, an amateur player. Uh, a pro, yeah, a pro at a pro level, uh, then the chess player is able to anticipate between four to five moves, They're able to visualize and calculate and be able to see how many moves am I going to make uh, probably uh, against the opponent. So a pro, at a pro level, the chess player is able to uh, make four, five moves. 
a master player. A master player is able to anticipate a six to ten moves. Yeah, but a grand player is able to visualize eleven to fifteen moves. And that is why this grand player, in most cases, could end up probably beating the master player because he or she is able to see more moves, have more moves, visualize more moves than a master player. So as a master player is, is able to see as, and, 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 uh, and, and uh, arrange and organize him or herself, visualize the six to 10 moves that he or she can make, the grand player is already far, far ahead. And leaders, this is what really strategic, being a strategic leader means. How many moves am I able to speculate or visualize just in case something happens? What are the options that I'm able to take? How many options do I have on the table? So in this discussion, uh, our expectation is that we'll be able to have that mind of a grand master chess player a grand master chess player. That when you're seated on your table, you're not just seeing tomorrow, next year, three years down the line, or four years down the line, or even 10 years. There is more on the table. We can visualize far, far ahead beyond what the master can see or what the pro level can, uh, at a pro level, a master player can see. So that's, that, that will be the stretching space uh, that we'll all want just to um, uh, really uh, think through. And uh, this is my first challenge uh, for you leaders. Uh, the question is, how many moves are you able to make as a leader uh, within the space where you are leading? How far are you able to anticipate into the future? How strategic are you in terms of planning for the future? And how tactical are you in terms of implementing uh, the strategies. That's that's the first uh, the first point of consideration that I want you to to invite you to think through. Now, the strategic leader is anchored on three pillars, and we'll unpack this in the course of our discussion. We will talk about strategic thinking and unpack it. There is a lot. There are principles of strategic thinking. There are even tools of strategic thinking. We'll expose you to those tools. And uh, I'm sure some of us here will end up becoming uh, great consultants after this discussion, because these are some of the tools that uh, the, 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 most of the consultants out there um, uh, are impressing or have adopted just to be able to formulate strategies, to be able to formulate policies, uh, and to be able to guide and lead organizations. So strategic thinking, that's really a very, very important pillar that we'll focus on. We'll also focus on uh, the second pillar, creativity and innovation. Yeah, creativity and innovation. We cannot survive in the current space until we embrace a certain level of creativity and innovation, where we have to get to a point and ask ourselves some questions and agree that what has gotten us here may not be able to take us to the next level. We have to unlearn this, relearn, refocus, re-strategize, and then relaunch to the next level. So we'll have a very comprehensive discussion. We look at some, some frameworks of creativity, how you develop a, a creativity or how you de develop an innovation strategy. We look at some of the tools. We look, we'll sample one from Deloitte. Deloitte. Um, a very comprehensive study was done by Deloitte. So we look at that. And uh, probably if you don't have um, an innovation strategy, probably this will be one of the space that will be able to usher you as an organization to be able to think through and maybe formulate um, uh, an innovation uh, strategy. Then finally, we look at adaptive agile learning. Very important. Today, I'll just be able to unpack the word agile in terms of strategy, but uh, this will be a very, uh, a very critical uh, area of discussion because organizations that are flourishing, organizations that are, have a high level of agility, a high level of adaptive, adaptive um, capacity to be able to really scan through the environment and see how to be able to adapt 
and, and be able to flourish within the existing environment. We're talking about a VUCA world and how we're able to get through and thrive. Remember, my keyword here is thrive, not just survive. It's about thriving in an environment that probably uh, many other organizations are not able to get through, especially if they have not been able to invest on strategic uh, leadership. So these are the pillars that uh, we'll focus on in the course of our discussion. And uh, just to be able to shed some more light on the, the these core pillars, of the strategic thinking, yeah, and this will focus on thinking in terms of differentiation, what really makes us stand out as unique, uh, what difference, and uh, I'm reminded of Apple. Apple talk, talks about think different, yeah, think different. Uh, so the unique, what gives us a competitive advantage that attracts customers to choose us over or to choose our product or services over other products and services? What are the incentives? What would attract our customers to us now? And leaders, I think this is a very, very important question. And most of you, I'm sure you've been in, um, maybe you've attended an interview, a job interview, and this is always a question. What, what is so unique about you from all the others? Yeah, and, and uh, when it comes to that question, I think we also bring in the context of the organization. What is really so unique? Yes, we have so many banks, but what, what, why should a customer pass all those banks and get to a bank? That's the aspect of strategic thinking. Then creativity and innovation, how to harness ideas. Leaders, we are in a space where we have to deliberately be able to harness from the user innovation concept. There's a lot of ideas on the space. There's a lot of ideas on the uh, on, on the social media, but how do we tap into that? Yeah, so harnessing ideas and knowledge to be able to unleash potential and turn creative ideas into viable solutions. Those are the organizations that will be able to flourish. Yeah, organizations that acknowledge that there's no one person that has the monopoly of ideas. An idea could come from that person that could be very seemingly low in terms of the hierarchy. An idea could come from that janitor who is just uh, mopping out there. An idea could pop up from anybody within the organization. And, and that, that way, uh, we, we realize we have many options on the table. Then adaptive other learning, yeah, making learning a priority, uh, proactive, and also personalized. Yeah, so uh, leaders, just to shed some light in terms of what we'll be able to engage through. And uh, for today, I just want to set the context and probably just to visualize what is ahead of us. Allow me to briefly mention um, a few uh, thoughts, to share a few thoughts about agile strategy. And what agile strategy does, it ensures that we are adaptable. It ensures that there is a sustained growth and also the issue of sustainability. So agile strategy ensures adaptability because we scan the environment, we scan our capacity, and quickly we know how to respond. We are saying it's time that you either innovate, you evolve, or you perish. Sadly to say that, and this is not just theoretically, it is experiences that we have had. On the, on the slides there, you can see agile strategy. Uh, organizations that have been able to adapt. Yeah, they have adaptive strategy. They have a living strategy. We're talking about a living strategy, not a static strategy. A strategy that, um, that anticipates that the environment might change and you might need to be able to even update your methodology, and update your strategy. You can see them, the, the 50 most innovative companies um, for 2022, and you see Apple being among them. We have, and, and remember their slogan is think different. Uh, we have uh, Microsoft, Amazon, and, and I'm sure most of us have interacted with this, uh, with these uh, solutions. So, uh, but on the other side, we have the static strategy. Those organizations adopt a, a static strategy, especially in the midst of rapid change. And currently, we are talking about technological change. We are talking about cultural change. We are talking about generational change. We are talking about a lot of shift within our environment. So 
there is no way a static strategy will take us through this kind of an environment. I think that's uh, that's really a message that I want just to to us to appreciate that the only way we can survive and thrive is by adopting an agile strategy. You can see there we have companies that are doing very well at a certain time, but probably maybe they took long to react. They took long to appreciate that change has come uh, and some of them may not be there. We have companies like Nokia, we have companies like Kodak. And I remember listening to the CEO of Nokia just as um, uh, they were coming to a close and he said they didn't do anything wrong. But unfortunately, they have to close. That was really, and, and I wish you just take some time and look for that speech online. It really is something that really touched me and it was a very loud message that sometimes you may not do something wrong to go down, but you may fail to respond and then you go down. Just think about that uh, as we talk about agile strategy. So this masterclass will help us just to be able to reflect and see where are we and how do we create the next wave? How do we create the next wave? Maybe you have advanced, you started, you have advanced, you've gotten to a space where there's sustainability and maybe in a way there's some sort of stagnation. Now the option is either we start going down with a lot of rips, uh, a lot of uh, waves, but luckily enough, such kind of a conversation, such kind of a masterclass could be the option to be able to figure the next wave. And that's our, our, our expectation that in this masterclass, every organization, every leader that will go through this masterclass will be thinking through in terms of what is my next wave? What is my next wave? Do I need to change strategy? Because without that leaders, sadly to say, if we don't innovate, we don't evolve, then we may perish. And I said, this is from experience. We have seen what has happened. This is not to scare us, but this is actually just to really make us feel that we have made the right choice. It's also just to appreciate uh, that there is opportunity to innovate, evolve, and be able to, uh, to, to, to thrive in the midst of all what we are talking about, the dynamic environment. So agile strategy is both being technical and also tactical. Yeah, allowing organizations to be able to act and adapt quickly to new environments, changing environments. How do we adapt quickly? And leaders, I think I, I, I wish just to again emphasize one thing here, that is very important to be very much aware of the external environment and the internal environment. We'll talk about the tools that we can use for that so that we are consistently scanning our external environment, not just within us. Remember, we are in a global village, so we have to really have a lot of knowledge of what is happening um, sometimes across the globe because what is happening uh, down east could affect what is happening down um, uh, north. So the agile strategy is about how we are able to think different from traditional strategies, yeah? That sometimes involve lengthy research and strict plans. So we are saying an agile strategy allows for flexibility. I said flexibility in terms of even our strategies that they can adapt to the new environment and also shared perspective. There's no monopoly of perspectives, but when we get to the space where we have an issue to deliberately engage in, we have a space where ideas can be able to, we can combine idea. You know, that's part of creativity and innovation. We can be able to package ideas and, and eventually come up with one that will serve us more effectively. Why are organizations struggling to adapt? Why are organizations struggling to adapt? Or why are organizations struggling to, to, to thrive? Not even to, sometimes not even to thrive, to survive. And I, I would reframe this in another word. What is the greatest challenge 
of every organization or most organization in the current times that we are in. What is the greatest challenge of organizations in terms of either surviving, in terms of thriving, in terms of growth? What do you think is the greatest danger, the greatest um, area of concern for every organization in the current uh, times that we are living? Could I invite you just to think with me on that question? And just allow, just invite you just to be able to share. Um, I think for the introduction are still going on, so I'll just invite you just to look at that. Uh, we have uh, Paula Mbula from Optive and Real Estate. We appreciate, we have Reverend Kennedy Waweru. We appreciate your presence. Now, leaders, I just want to sample maybe two or three. What is the greatest, um, uh, should I say, danger or the greatest need of organizations now, or the greatest concern of organizations currently for them to be able to survive. What do you think? Maybe we could share just a few, uh, a, a sample of that, then, then, then we proceed. And I'm sure this is an experience that we're also having within our, our leadership areas. So I will just sample a few and uh, Maybe if you allow me, I could also point out just a few, invite a few of us just to share. Uh, and I'll invite maybe Ruth Gidenji. What, what do you think is the, the, the greatest concern of organizations now for them to be able to thrive? I'll pick, I'll invite Ruth, and then I'll invite Lynn Yongesa, and then I'll invite Reverend Johnston Kahindi. The three, I think they'll be able to set uh, just share a th some thoughts that we can all uh, probably reflect on as we continue to have others on the chat. So let me start with Ruth. Ruth, give the entry if you're in a space uh, as we prepare for Ruth. Lynn Nyongesa, are you in a space to share your reflection on this question? Yeah, uh, Reverend Kahindi, are you in a position to be able to share your thoughts on this question? Good evening, leaders. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening. Thank you for this time. Uh, one of the things that uh, is a big challenge is people management to bring productivity, mm. and more so when there is change the change management and the people management during change management is normally a big issue. So the leaders might have some good ideas and they have the direction, but how do we make this one come to be? Like uh, from the graph that we are showing, sometimes we find the energy is going down, the wave is ebbing and uh, how do we then recreate another wave that will push us further? Mm. That's a challenge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Reverend Kahendi works with KCB Bank, and I'm sure uh, that's one bank, I'm sure, very, very concerned in terms of how do we uh, continuously um, remain um, as one of the leading banks among many others. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I see Joseph Wafula fear of organizational culture and behavior. Yeah, this is in the terms of the iceberg model. The, 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 the face, what we see at the tip is actually as a result of the organization culture and behavior. And there's a lot of shift in this space. And that is also affecting us. It's actually, it's, a, it's an area that we have to deliberately think through. I've seen a number of books on organization culture, which I'm sure uh, uh, books that we really want to just connect with and see how do we uh, thrive in this current uh, setup. Uh, Willie, I see fear of unknown resistance to change in case of adopting new or different way of doing business. Yes, change management as Reverend has talked about. And one of the things that is guaranteed is change. Change will either will hit us whether we like it or not, 
it is part and parcel of our life. And there's one thing we can do with change, we can embrace change and then make meaning out of it. Learn from it and try, turn it uh, in a positive way and see how we can be able to flourish uh, in the midst of change. Uh, organizations that are able to adapt, to be able to uh, embrace change more quickly, uh, actually at the end of the day, they, they, they excel, they, 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 they thrive. Because maybe others are trying even to accept things have changed and for them, Already they have embraced change and they're thinking in the boardrooms, they're thinking on their feet, how do we now move on uh, in the midst of these changes? Thank you so much. Um, uh, Paula, I see keeping up with the market transformation. Yes, a lot of shifts, government policy, many other uh, dynamics uh, that are also shaping up. Uh, our market, our market uh, spaces, innovation, innovation, reaching out to Generation Z and mille, mille, uh, millennials, very important. I'll do a comparison. I'll give a comparison of uh, from the uh, baby, um, what they call baby boomers, and all the way the traditional uh, generational, all the way to Generation Z, and also Generation Z digital. Yeah. So, what is the behavior? What do they expect? We'll have that conversation here uh, in, the, in the course of this uh, discussion. Teamwork, I see that also. Thank you, thank you. I think that's a good sample, a good sample. So agile, we have to be agile. That's what we are saying for us to be able to adopt. So why are organizations struggling to adapt? Most organizations are not structured for change. And that has come out from your conversation. We are, we are structured for stability, not structured for change. Stability is good because you have to create a balance, but again, we have to accept and create some flexibility to be able to adapt to the new changes. Yeah, the other, the, the, the other point is the top-down, command and control structures with organizational silos that make it difficult to communicate across the organization. Remember, leaders, I said, there's no one person, there's no one leader that has the monopoly of ideas. Ideas could come from bottom up, and this one I'm talking in terms of management. They could come from top down. They could come from the laterals. And, and, and I think understanding of that, we democratize the issue of where ideas could originate from. Yeah, There is an element of bureaucratic stage gate processes that filter information up to the executive level in order for the executives to make decisions and use top-down orders. We're saying it's time we democratize this. Yeah, it's time we also allow some raw kind of information on the tables uh, and, and just unpack that and see what, what can we make out of this information. Governance that is rules-based and plan-driven Workers follow the plan and most often without understanding the intended outcomes, hampering the organization's ability to move fast and adapt. Agile strategy is about having a plan that is again well understood and is also collaborative in terms of how we formulate the strategy. Use of traditional thinking to address unprecedented and uncontrollable change. This is, this is something that uh, actually affected some of the organizations that we talked about there. Yes, we are in a different space that requires a different response. And here we have to, we want to still use our jembe in an environment where maybe we have to adopt something else. So how, how, how can we survive in that? That's why some organizations are struggling to adapt. Just a few in addition to what we have mentioned. And here there is a comparison of traditional organizations and adaptive and agile organizations. Uh, I think I'll not go through this because this will be part of the comprehensive discussion that we'll have in the course of our, our masterclass. Remember today we're just setting the stage. So project driven, where we have a clear start and end date, yeah? uh, set budget, budget and scope. That, that's very traditional. And that's really what is happening in our spaces. But on the other side, adaptive and agile organization, they focus on customer impact. What is the customer impact? and business outcome, yeah? So it's about customer first. 
Then on the other side, we have stage gates. On this other side, we have iterative and incremental ongoing learning and adjusting along the way. Yeah, so uh, we, we are saying that on the traditional organization, it's about follow the plan without question. But on the other side, we are saying strategic discovery, questioning, being inquisitive, and creating that space of accepting that let's embrace a triple loop learning environment. Then plans are assumptive uh, and all the way. Uh, so this, this is quite a lot. I just want you to look at this and appreciate the differences, appreciate uh, that there is need to really focus on this issue of agile uh, strategy, agile learning uh, in the context of our leadership for us to be able to position our organizations to thrive. Leaders in traditional organizations, leaders communicate goals, objectives, strategy, and mission, and hold teams accountable. But on the other side, for adaptive, we're saying leaders co-create a set of shared values and the principle that guide the actions and behavior of all. Yeah, traditional saying that leaders hold teams accountable, uh, they plan and output, they focus on plans and output driven. The decision making is centralized. But on the other side, they're saying decision making is distributed to those closest to you. We look at some principles of why some companies have excelled or existed for more than 100 years. And we look at some of the principles that they have impressed. I've done a comprehensive research on that. And I'm sure that will really be information that will be very important for a seasoned CEO or even an upcoming and emerging CEO um, just to be able to get that insight. Mm -hmm. Then organization are siloed in traditional one. Communication and collaboration across is in terms of silo is limited. But we're saying now it's about being adaptive, being agile, and it's about having teams that are integrated. Collaboration in the creation of the shared context necessary to achieve desired customer impact and business outcome. It's about how do we collaborate? How do I stick on my core, stick on your core? Then all of us are able to get to the global space because we can be able to, um, uh, we, we can have leverage uh, in terms of our, our, our specific spaces. So leaders, just yeah, some, some of the tips or some of the uh, talks on why there's an, a, a deliberate effort in this masterclass to really, focus uh, intensely on the issue of agile, agile strategy. Yeah, and we're saying agile strategy is focused on identifying, testing possible solution. Then you continuously revise the solutions based on evidence. So it's a, it's a continuous, it's iterative. Yeah, you get insight rather than just having rigidity planning and then executing. That's, that's a game changer. That's a game changer. Yeah, so continuously revising those solutions based on evidence and insight rather than rigid, rigidly planning and then executing. A lot of investment also needs to go into this because you'll appreciate um, we've put a lot of money to come up with a five-year strategy and then we stick on that and then maybe review after two, three years, uh, two, or two and a half years or around there. Then I, I think that that time has in a way I would say has been overtaken by event. Yes, it's good to plan, but it's also good to plan with that mind that things might shift. Yeah. So unlike traditional assumption, uh, best strategic planning, agile strategy, we rely on strategy discovery. Yeah, process focusing on discovery processes as opposed to a planning process that frees leaders and teams to be open to new evidence and insight. Yeah, so that we can be able to be influential, guide our influence, and, and also create a loop to be able to learn. A loop, very important. So the key issue here is that uh, strategy, uh, agile strategy uh, has to be people-centered, is also people-defined and evidence-driven. Uh, evidence There is an agile strategy, again, uh, development process. You have to visualize strategic intent, come up with possible solution, have an ecosystem of partnerships, sequencing, organization for delivery, then continuous value creation. What is our value creation? And leaders, remember I asked you a question earlier. Why should someone pass 
all the banks within the city and come to your bank or come to your boutique or come to your uh, real estate company. There has to be value addition. There has to be value creation. And then strategic organization uh, retrospective. So this is something again that we shall look at. Then we're saying agile strategy has to start from what is the reality? What is today's reality? That's where we start from. That's how I'm saying we need to understand the space. Then we ask ourselves the other question. If we solve the problems and or exploit the opportunities before us, what impact will it have on our customers? Leaders, I wish to really scale up the issue of impact, regardless of the organization that you are working for. Uh, yes, I know they are for profit organization, they are for non profit organization, regardless of the, 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 the setup. I think the main question should be what is our impact? And I'm happy to note we have someone from uh, uh, Optiven uh, Real Estate here. And I think if we communicate in terms of impact, really, even our marketing might be much easier. It might be now a shift from just the push marketing to the pull marketing. Because in the pull marketing, we have understood the value. It is us who will come to your offices because you have shown us the value. You have showed us how this will impact our life. And then we move on to the other question in terms of customer impact. What impedes our achieving the true norm? What problems are we solving? What opportunities have we noticed that we want to exploit? And that way, this is how we are able now to really get to the heart of our customers. Yeah. And that makes the whole difference in terms of how we, we are able to uh, attract or how we are able to, um, uh, to connect uh, with, with our customers, with our organizations, and also with our partners. So for this masterclass, uh, what is the structure? We learn for 10 weeks one session per week, that will be on Wednesday for two hours. Uh, already we have a pre-masterclass evaluation and some of you have already uh, filled the questionnaire. Uh, we really, this is our first session. So if you have not filled the questionnaire immediately after this, I will post the questionnaire. Then you will fill this because this is our pre-masterclass session. Yeah, it's done even before the information session. So we need to do this, and then we'll have a post masterclass evaluation uh, at the very end. So we'll have two physical high-end networking sessions in one of the hotels that will uh, be identified in the course of our discussion. Then we'll have two resources. We have two books uh, that will be um, that will be driven, uh, or will be uh, distributed in the course of our discussion. One of the book is strategic leader a blueprint for strategic leaders that has the three pillars that I've talked about. And then the second book, uh, the 5MM Leader. This will be an online resource uh, that will again be shared online. But the strategic leader will have a physical copy. Already the books are ready. So uh, after this masterclass, we now get into the conversation on how do we deliver as you give us your, real, your actual location uh, then a team will work around that. This is the schedule. If you have already done the pre-masterclass pre evaluation, I'm sure you have already taken notice of the, uh, of the, the schedule. Uh, the information session or pre-masterclass session uh, was scheduled for today, and this is what is going on currently. Uh, then next week, uh, Wednesday, we'll now look at the introduction, the pillars of strategic leadership, and then we'll look at module one, strategic leadership concepts and terms. And then we'll move on the other week, uh, strategic leadership gap. What is the gap? We look at some analysis and also some studies uh, in terms of what gaps exist and what we need to do. Then we look at declining companies' average lifespan. This is another, this is another shocking um, uh, statistics. Uh, earlier organizations were able to survive and probably grow for maybe 30 or more years, but the lifespan has gone down. Very few organizations have, are able to go beyond 20 years 
Yeah. So we look at that and then what are the lessons learned? Then we now get into the heart of strategic leadership at module four. Then module five, uh, principal strategic leadership. And uh, as we handle module five, this will be a physical session and it will be on a Saturday, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. on 22nd July, 2023. So uh, this calendar will be shared so that we can take note of those dates. Then module six is strategic thinking and the tools that are available. I will discuss a number of tools there. Uh, Mackenzie 7S, uh, among others. Then strategic innovation, I mentioned that. We'll look at a tool by uh, Deloitte uh, and just be able to see the, the, the structure and what are the lessons that we can pick from there. Module eight is organization change management. And this has come out in this class. And then how do we lead in a VUCA world? So we'll have a conversation there. We'll have a, a very comprehensive change management um, uh, strategy that we can adopt. Then transformative strategic planning, that's module 10. And then week 10, we'll have another high-end networking session, which will be physical on 26th of August, 2023. And we'll be looking at the topic strategic plan implementation framework. So leaders, that's, uh, uh, that's the structure of the masterclass, and that's the schedule of what uh, is before us. So what are the terms of the masterclass? Uh, again, if you have um, if you have uh, responded to the questionnaire, I'm sure you have this information, uh, but just to be able to clarify maybe a few things. Uh, one, we're saying this is a high-end training, uh, leveraging on collective learning, collaboration, and networking, and the masterclass will cost you uh, 25000 for GLN members and 35000 thousand four and GLN members. And the training materials will be provided. Remember, we have two books that we shall provide. Again, this uh, fee will also take care of our physical meeting. Remember, we have two physical meetings uh, in, in a hotel that uh, will be communicated later on. So that is also part of the package, uh, including whatever shall be provided uh, in that hotel. So what are the uh, payment uh, option? One, we have one off full payment. Uh, that comes with a discount. So if you're a GLN member and you're making one full one off full payment, uh, that means you'll pay 20,000. Uh, if you're not GLN member, you'll pay 30,000. But if you pay installments, uh, you'll pay 25,000 for GLN members and then 35,000 for non-GLN members. Uh, for installments, we uh, we encourage or our, our, our policy is that we need to start with a 50% uh, before we start the discussion or we start the masterclass, that is by before next week, Wednesday. And then you can do the other in two installment. By module six, you need to have done 75%. And then by module nine, uh, you need to have um, paid 100% as we prepare now to get into module 10. So the payment details are already indicated and um, we have the TIL number and we have um, uh, the name. So um, after this, we'll also create a platform uh, where we'll be able to engage more uh, so that we can create uh, a platform on how we shall be communicating. We didn't want to create that before because we didn't know how many people will be ready to be able to uh, proceed after the information session. So after this, uh, we'll now be able to do that, and uh, that will now set us ready to be able uh, to proceed. Leaders, I want to post there, I want to post there, and uh, I know it has been on my side, and I think uh, it's just good enough. We are good on time. Uh, we expected to take one hour, and uh, really we've taken one hour so far. Uh, we just want to, uh, to also... Uh, handle in case there are any comments from your end. Uh, I'm believing that the 21 of us who are here are ready to move on uh, with the masterclass. Actually, we have pre printed 21 books uh, for strategic leader because uh, this is cohort one and it is, uh, uh, we, we expected probably around 20 or so. Uh, so uh, maybe the first question that I would ask to us, uh, let me ask that question uh, to us the end. Uh, for now, let me just open it up. We, we will not take more than 10 minutes just to wind up. So um, let me just uh, open the space. 
uh, in case there are comments, in case there are questions, in case there are observations. Um, uh, this is the time that uh, we can reflect on that and then we'll be able to conclude our discussion. So let me just invite uh, the conversations. Yeah, and already I can see some confirmation on the chat. Uh, I, and I think this will also be very good if you could just also confirm so that uh, even as we set up the group, we know. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Josephine Wanjiro. Uh, you're saying, I thank God. I am in cohort one. Great to see you, leaders. So, Josephine, thank you so much for confirmation. And that's the question I really wanted to ask. Uh, are you in leaders? And if you're ready to go, could you just send a message on the chat uh, so that even as we create the group, actually we'll now be able to ensure that uh, you are in. Because sometimes not everybody who participates in the information day uh, are ready to be able to proceed. So I, I request you just to share on the chat. Uh, yes, just the way Reverend Kahindi has indicated, I am in. Yeah, something like that. And as we do that, could I also open the space maybe for some reaction? Uh, then we'll wind up our conversation. Uh, I don't know if I could just to make it more uh, more structured. Could I just um, probably ask, um, just take randomly. In case you have a comment, you would share. In case you don't have a comment, I could move on to the next person. Uh, Mr. Daniel Kimemia. Uh, any comment? If you, you have one, you could share. If no, um, uh, I can proceed to Ruth Gidinchi and then Grace. Thank you very much, Bona Chairman. And uh, good evening, readers. Uh, I think uh, that is a very uh, powerful introduction. It is a dynamic subject because we are seeing a lot of uh, changes in the world of today, in the business world. There are many companies that are sinking and there are others that are transforming themselves day and night. So I think we cannot rest as leaders. We must also be dynamic in our thinking. In fact, we must adopt a three-dimensional thinking strategy where you are, you are able to see from all angles. You cannot just look ahead because you don't know who is behind you. You cannot ignore the right and the left-hand side because things are changing every other day. And we must move from the traditional way of thinking, traditional way of uh, leadership and adopt new methods so that we can be prepared for the challenges that are coming from all over. And um, there are so many things that are happening because I was just thinking about the Kodak case. These guys were very happy. They were the market leader in their field, but all of a sudden some new technology just comes up and the guys are swept by the flood. So it, it is very important that we adopt that dynamic thinking. And I really appreciate that, Bona Chairman, you have something to cure that problem. Mm -hmm. This is a very powerful uh, uh, class. And I believe by the end of it, we'll be very innovative readers in this team. Thank you very much, Bona Chairman. We are proud of you. And I mean, cohort number one. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Uh, uh, it's true. You have actually reminded me something when you talked about the 3D. Uh, at certain point, we were using the maps and they were serving us very well. Uh, we proceeded, we advanced, we could have now a map and have a compass. But where are we now? Uh, now we can sit comfortably in our Pass, and someone will just tell us, turn right, turn left. And if you miss the turn, we'll tell you there's another one or a route. Yeah, that's 
that, I think that's a very good example of what you're talking about, adaptive strategies. You will never go wrong. You will have something, an option, because you, as our strategies are adapting. I thank you so much for that. Uh, Ruth, you have a comment. I know earlier you had indicated. Okay. Uh, how about Grace Duku? I'm just doing a random. Grace Duku. Good evening, leaders. Yes, good evening, Grace. All right. I am excited to join this class and from the from the introduction, I find it more advanced than what we have done before. Mm -hmm. And I find it actually for me. <laughs> I find it uh, it is going to change my level to the next one. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, I'll, I, I am finding myself already in that space of uh, 360 degrees. Mm -hmm. And even going beyond amateur to the grandmaster, you know, and surpassing that. And I like that concept. And yes, I'm in uh, cohort 001. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Grace. Uh, we have also uh, Blessed Paula. Good evening. Uh, any observation you could share, Paula? Okay, I think I'll get to Paula a little bit la uh, later. We have Joseph Wafula. Okay, I mentioned. Okay. Case... Uh, good, good evening, leaders. Good evening. Uh, well, uh, for me, I would say um, I'm glad to have joined. Actually, this is uh, a very senior subject. And um, when I was doing uh, total quality management, I took strategic management as um, uh, as a master's class. Mm. Now it, I never did it, so it looks like uh, uh, this is my time to do it because uh, uh, what I did mostly was uh, organizational behavior and uh, change management, and therefore this is quite a it, and I'm happy that I will follow up and uh, I will get good knowledge on this one. Otherwise, thank you very much, Chair, for creating this class, 001 cohort. Thank you. Thank you so much, Engineer uh, Wafula. Uh, we have uh, Morila. Morila. We also have uh, Willie. Kiranga. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Okay, first is uh, to thank uh, God and to thank you for giving us this opportunity. And uh, following the, 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 the pre master class, uh, um, able to say that uh, this uh, lessons has, is uh, timely. I would also say it is very relatable, uh, incisive, informative, and uh, I would say that this is a higher calling. I happened to be cohort 29, but uh, from uh, uh, today's introduction of pre master class, this is calling us to a higher level. And uh, I am in to learn. And uh, maybe I'm looking for personal and uh, professional transformation to be able to be a better person mm -hmm. uh, in the area of my personal life and also professionally. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to 
uh, as the this class unfold. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Willie. Uh, let me also invite uh, uh, Josephine Wanjiro, Honorable, for any reaction. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, leaders. Yeah, I'm also excited to be in this cohort one. And I'm excited to know that I'm going into a different level, coming from a, a scientific world and now coming to learning about leadership. It was challenging in the first, uh, in the first training and I believe it is going to be very challenging even for the, the next level. I've looked at uh, the, the topics that we are going to cover and I'm very sure by the end of the day, I'll be very transformed and ready. I'm ready to learn and unlearn thing, new things. So thank you so much, Chairman, and thank you co colleagues, comrades. I believe we are going to have a very good time uh, to the end of it. I also like the fact that we have physical meetings at the middle and at the end. And I look forward to meeting all of us, especially in this cohort one. Thank you, God bless you all. Thank you, I uh, really appreciate. I know your schedule is really tight and just considering again to be with us, uh, we, we really appreciate that. And leaders, you remember this has been my slogan that uh, busy people are the best to work with uh, because they're one, they have good time managers. Uh, and I think everybody who is in this platform today, uh, we, we can all acknowledge our schedules are quite tight, but that's the person that we really want to work with. Because that person that is busy will sometimes not let you down uh, when you have an engagement. Otherwise, uh, I, I see our time is well spent, so maybe I may not um, mention everybody, but uh, maybe in case you have a comment, uh, we could allow, in case there is anybody else uh, who has a comment, who has a question. And then after that, uh, after taking the comment, I'll um, invite Reverend Kahindi, who has been a key uh, pillar for this uh, pro uh, this um, um, organization, just to share his thoughts, and then we will close at that. Uh, for those who have remained, is there anybody who has a comment to share? Good, I think we are we're good to go. Uh, I've noted on the chat, uh, most of you have confirmed you are in, ready to go. So from tomorrow, we'll give you a call uh, and then we'll make uh, arrangement on how you'll be able to get uh, the training manual. Uh, and then one will be physical and then the other one will be online. Thank you so much leaders. I am also looking forward. Uh, I'm looking forward to learn and learn and relearn. I'm looking forward to learn from the collective wisdom. I'm sure by the time we are done with this masterclass, none of us will be in the same space again. I, I personally strongly believe so. Yeah, uh, even myself, I think I'm really expecting a lot uh, from this masterclass uh, at a personal level uh, that this will be a turning point and probably this will scale us to another level uh, that, that's really... Uh, uh, extremely high in terms of how we think issues out, uh, how in terms of knowledge and also in terms of how we, we relate. Uh, I really appreciate and uh, we'll be back again here on Wednesday as we now get into uh, our lesson one. Uh, otherwise, with that, I want to invite Reverend Kahindi uh, just to uh, share uh, his comments and then uh, make a prayer for us uh, even as we wind up. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Chairman. Thank you very much for this. Hey, leaders, let, let us appreciate our Chairman with some uh, digital clubs. I know you know that much. So let's let's have some digital clubs for our Chairman. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very well. Uh, 
Sante Rebecca, Sante Mili. Chairman, Sante Sana. Uh, you, you always challenge me on how you get quiet only to come out bigger than uh, you left. It's a big challenge to me. And I, I always say, I, I wish I could copy this and that. Well, in my own space, I'm encouraged and uh, it's making me make strides. Leaders, I am happy that you could all join here with your busy schedules. I like the commitment. Uh, looking at the chat, Ruthie says, I'm sorry I'm in a noisy background, but I'm following. Uh, blessed Paula also, people are having challenges, but the mantle of a leader is with those challenges, you still surmount them and reach your goal. So I appreciate all of you. And uh, again, I know those 10 weeks will be tough because we are adding a program into a very busy schedule. But I want to encourage you that once we do it, we, we can be sure we'll never be the same again. It's a great thing. Look forward to be with you here. And uh, let's just encourage each other, pray for each other, and uh, pray for our chairman. Let God give him more strength, more revelation to take us through all this. Thank you. May we kindly pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for, again, allowing us to get this introduction. We thank you for the promises that this one holds. And Lord, we pray that you shall enable us to go through this course. And that at the end of it, we will be better leaders to your glory. We pray that we shall be more impactful in this world, in the leadership positions that you have given us. And that, Lord, you shall be glorified. I pray for each and every leader that, Father, you shall help them create time in their busy schedules that they can grow in this cause. Thank you for our leader, our chairman. Lord, I commit him into your hands that you give him more strength, more wisdom. Commit his family into your hands that he shall be well with them. May you provide for them. May you, Jehovah, fill their home with laughter and joy. Fill it with love. And Father God, make it be a place where even the young ones shall flourish. We honor you, commit ourselves to your hands, that this night it shall be peaceful, and it shall be well with each and every one of, of us. But in the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. 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 I always prefer that we all unmute Amen. and share the grace together. So kindly unmute so that we can share the grace together. Is a tradition I like. Yes. Yes, Bye -bye. Tabitha is ready. Mary, you are muted. And now we go. Yes. Now may the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. 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 Spirit.